Hey, it's the Chief Bonnet with Board Games. This is a review of Peloponnesian War by Mark Herman, GMT Games. Now, this is a remake. This game existed a long time ago. What was it? 1992-ish? Later? From Victory Games. It's a solitaire game. However, this one you can also play two-player. But what's very interesting about this solitaire version, and this is what intrigued me even way back then, although I never picked it up, was as you're playing one side, the Athenians or the Spartans, if you start to win and, to, and do too good, boom, it flips on you, and you now have to play the side that you were just trouncing. So now you have to battle back. And that's a very interesting aspect of how do you how do you handle this where you are your own opponent very cool and peloponnesian war is taking you back to fifth and fourth century greece and you're up at a level where what this game is going to be teaching you or moving you through is how was this battle fought by the will of the people? How was it handled with the cost? In some ways, the it feels a little bit like an ancient Vietnam. What is the will of the people to continue the fight? Or if I'm pronouncing it right, bellicosity. By the way, my pronunciations of ancient Greece, not good. Don't tune in if that's going to drive you crazy. Because I try. I even... Looked up a couple and found out how to say them, but whoo, and this isn't my era, but I love the solitaire style. So think you're dialed out. Think how much does this war cost my people and what is their will to fight it? Let me go in. I'm going to give you a really high perspective of the game. It's not a, a teaching review at all. It's not a playthrough review at all, but Let's go take a look. All right, I wanted to open up on this map a little bit and just show you how attractive it is. Sorry, my cup, which has some leaders in there, is shadowing the board a little bit. But this is a mounted map, so it's not the paper map like from the old Victory games. And it's just gorgeous. I've got the book open on what I call as a splash page. So that's the rule book, and it walks you so perfectly through the setup. Um, so you can see I've got the, oh, I forget their nomenclature. I call them the control boards. So you've got one, I'm going to be con controlling the Athenians. Right now the system will be controlling the Spartans. And what's very nice here is getting you into the game quickly. So the rules manual, again, is where the setup is. Extremely easy and simple. You've got very nice player aids as you would expect from GMT. And when you're doing the campaign game, not the individual scenarios, but it tells you how to lay those out as well. Um, you're looking at your game turn sequence, but as you begin, you begin in the operations phase. And there is a playbook, which I have this set up to. So you can see the playbook is here. And again, it tells you example of play. It tells you to go to that splash page, set the board up as it's displayed, and then they're gonna walk you through the turns. And it will walk you through um, a full turn where you're getting a chance to maneuver around on the board. And I'm gonna show you some of this in a little more detail in a bit, where sometimes you're mustering units and you're moving around and gathering hoplites or ships or cavalry troops. Then you can also have a phase where maybe you have enough troops or you've mustered what you need and you basically are headed to, I'll show you a deal where you'll move down the coast of uh, the Spartan area here. You're headed on your primary attack to a specific city and along the way you are ravaging the land. You're you're burning structures and villages, and I'm sure you're killing livestock and taking prisoners and, and uh, destroying fields of grain or whatever. So on the way, you're, you're putting the torch to everything, which is huge because a main component of this is 
the finances behind building ships and, and putting out hoplites and cavalry troops and then going out campaigning. And if you don't have cities or villages, city states that are, uh, you know, been kept safe, you're not going to have as much money. Let me step in and show you really the basics on how this works. I will tell you the basics of the movement is pretty simple. You're really left with how you're going to put those into strategic use. So following the Spartan strategy matrix and the attack Athens die roll, which says we have to attack Decelia, we have to have 12 hoplites and two cavalry units. And we're starting from Sparta. Now I'm gonna zoom in on Sparta so we can see what's there. I've splayed the troops out already. Uh, I've also splayed the troops out on the, basically the route we have to take in order to get over to Decelia. So right off the bat, you can see our numbers. Now the hoplite um, number three, HG, that's home guard, those Spartans will not leave Sparta. They're there to protect it. You can't use them. Also, along our route, which I kind of briefly showed you, there are other cavalry units that will be available. And the rules say when that's an option, you will not or I will not take that one cavalry unit, if I can bring it on there, boom, that's sitting right there. So I'm going to leave him as well. But I'm going to take those uh, five, six, seven hoplites along with me as I trek to muster more units as required by the strategy matrix. Let me zoom back out. So I'm taking um, Archidemus and his seven hoplites up to Corinth. Let me zoom in. So as Archidemus has traveled up to Corinth, he needs to pick up more hoplites. He's still looking for cavalry as well. He's going to leave one behind to protect the, uh, the city-state, but he's going to pick up four of them. But now he's outside of Sparta, and this is going to cost money. So bringing the strategy matrix board on, see if we can get it to, there we go. You can see he's got 3,000. Well, hoplites cost you 200 apiece. So he's going to have to spend 800 right here, and you can start to see the treasury situation that you're also managing as you play. You have to muster and build armies. They're expensive. When you get to the ships or the trains, you'll see they're even more expensive. They're 400 apiece. So Archidemus pays the price and picks up four hoplites. All right, we still need to pick up one hoplite and two more cavalry, and Thebes is the place where we're going to get them. If I can get my thing on here, boom. Now there's four different routes to get over there. So we're going to roll randomly. And of course the playbook has you going through, but we're going to end up touching on an area space that is in the zone of influence of Athens. When you go through that zone, if that's a route you take, there is a chance of an intercept. So as we pop into Panoptum, let me go ahead and move it in there. Athens because they have a cavalry unit. Now, if they just had hoplites in there, their, their zone of influence is just the space they're in. They have some cavalry, so now they extend out one space. And if they had ships, they would extend out two down shipping lanes. But again, we're dealing with cavalry. There is a zone of influence issue here, so we must resolve it. But the point of this is to show that as you move around on the board, you're going to be engaging in spaces that look empty, but that may or may not be under the zone of influence of different city-states, depending on the units they have within them. There's no battle here. We're going to continue on to Thebes and pick up the cavalry and the hoplites that we need. We again will pay the price in Thebes for the um, hoplite and two cavalry. It's 200 each. It's subtracted off the board. And now we're en route to our intended target. We're no longer mustering. There are two routes available here, but we would roll, the determination would be made, and we would follow that route. Archidemus has now arrived at his objective, Decelia. And the Spartan objective is completed. 
So as the Athenian player, I want to ravage the Peloponnesian coast. And I'm going to grab some ships. Pericles is going to grab some ships and he's going to ravage that coast all the way over to Irenes. So Pericles needs to come down and pick up or wants to pick up three naval units. That's expensive. That's 400 talents or 1,200 total that he's going to pick up in order to come along and ravage the coast. So again, as the Athenians move through friendly spaces, there's no ravaging. But as soon as they start to hit the Spartan spaces, you'll see I've placed ravaged markers along the route that's taken until they get to a zone of influence case here because Sparta does have a cavalry unit. It's able to extend out. There's a skirmish. This is all determined by dice rolls, which I'm not going to go into. However, there's the option that you can have a null battle, which means there's no losses from either side, but they've successfully defended this city and there's no ravished marker that occurs. The ships basically continue on um, with their damage along the coast. So you can see this continues following their sea lanes. So not the land but the sea lane that comes around. The ravaging continues and we roll into yet another chance at a skirmish. Um, they're not intercepted. The ravaging happens. The ships continue on their way. And this time they shoot way up over to here. So they're following this route and then they come in to a neutral space and over. They'll do another ravage and then they come on in to friendly ports, neutral ports, and finally, Pericles and his ships arrive at Irenes. So operation phases can go back and forth as long as you have the money to spend. And once both sides have passed, you'll move to the combat phase. This game is very much about having the talents, the money, the treasury to continue the battle. And if you get your territories ravaged, attacked, and burned, it's going to hurt your revenue production that you get at the end of each turn. And if you don't have the revenue to build in some new SPs, some new units, Calvary, Hoplite, Triemes, the ships, or you have these troops or ships, but you don't have, because when you activate them for operations, you have to pay for them as well. 200 for hoplites or cavalry, 400 for ships. All this is, I mean, just imagine you're having to feed them, you're having to maintain, you're having to train. And it's a very much economic system that is what allows you to go out and, and battle. So as you're fostering rebellion or sieging certain locations, it's a very much push and pull in an economic sense, as opposed to battling dice roll-offs. So when there's a siege, you want to see who has the advantage. So if the attacking or the besieging force has more naval SPs than the person being attacked or besieged, you will take the leader's tactical rating, Pericles in this case, the, that's the upper number, strategy number is the lower one, tactical one's the upper one. In this case, it's a one. And I'll simply roll a die and then add in that tactical number. So it's a six-sided die plus one. If I get a one to a three, the siege fails. The troops are going to go back to the going home space. I will still ravage the land around it. But again, my SCI or my strategy confidence index number will be reduced by one, by two, if it's the human player. So again, we're getting into the weeds here a little bit, but you can see you're at a disadvantage if you're the human player and you go out and do a besieging action and fail. The bot or the non-player gets a little bit of a break here. If the siege succeeds, you eliminate the force that is inside that city. You get rid of your siege marker, put in a ravaged marker. The losing side, or in this case, the besieged side's SCI will be reduced by one. The side attacking gets their SCI increased by one. And best of all, but a little bit dark, is the besieging uh, side gets a 300 talents increase. 
that is the taking of slaves as the victor, uh, which again, historical. There's some other minute details with sieging. Again, I'm going to tell you, I'm glossing over some of this, but I just want to give the idea. Sieging's huge, but you can see it's actually kind of randomly dangerous at the same time. A tactical bonus of one is not all that great. It's not like you're adding all your SPs from your naval units or hoplites in there as well. It's your leader that matters. You'll move to a rebellion stage. There's um, city states that will be in rebellion. I'm not even going to go into the details here, but there's a whole function of rebellion spreading. Uh, think pandemics almost, and that they start to spread from neighboring uh, cities via location to location. And another place where zones of influence can um, affect those rebellions. All right, let's go discuss final thoughts. All right, we're back. Well, first of all, let me tell you, beautiful. So you've seen the components. The map board is just gorgeous. Um, I can't pronounce half of the cities that are on there. Where am I going to? Blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure I said that right. Where do I want to go? There. Oh, and then Corinth. I know that one. Thebes. I know that one. But uh, the components, phenomenal. Again, you would expect this from GMT in the first place, but that mounted board is just gorgeous. The game surprised me in the fact that when I came in, I had a picture that I was going to be managing the battles and a little bit closer minutia. I don't know, my mind's always tactical. I love tactical World War II, and I knew this wasn't that. You can tell that by looking at the map. But I had a thought that it would be more of that, and that is not what this is, as, as you've seen. This is way more of that, well, it's the will to fight. It's how are you gonna crush the other side's will to fight or their ability to pay for said fight. And then it's the, oh, I'm doing really good, flip. Now I'm on the other side and I've got to go try to stop what I just did to myself. Hello. Try that one on for size. <laughs> so the struggle, the back and forth. Um, I don't see me ever playing this two player. Um, but I was curious. I did not play it two players. So I went on and looked around at some folks that said they, at least on BGG, that it was playing two player very well. So please go to BGG under the uh, game page for Peloponnesian War and, and read that if you're interested in it as a two player game. I have had no experience in that at all. Um, the, so not a knock, but the minutia of the rules, um, would have been a lot more difficult for me to digest if the playbook wasn't there. Thank you, thank you for the playbook. Because as soon as I, I read the rules and I was kind of like, man, there's a lot of steps. And then what I hate is caveats, but the caveats keep it historic. So the caveat could be you do this, but by the way, add two if you're at this city. Oh my God, I'll never remember that. But then there's a player aid that will give you a little bullet point that will help you Remember that. Um, um, you know, well, there's a lot of like this except for this or this, but it's your home city, so this. Or um, if it's the human-controlled player, then you need this. But if it's the bot, then you only need one. And it was like, whew. I always come at things more from a tactical standpoint, and I was very intrigued by this how do I fund the war? Then how do I go out and break and ravish these lands and, and stop the will to fight in order to get a surrender? And then I was stunned how simple it is to figure out a siege. I expected more tactical combat and no, you're still way up here. Um, and the leaders and their sway and how many units do I send out to do my bidding and okay it was successful now they're going home again <laughs> and so i was like huh okay and it churns through faster than i expected 
And even if you're not into Ancients, I believe this is a great gateway game to get you in to Ancients. It's just you. I, I will tell you, when I can sit down in a solitaire mode, pick up and leave as I need, I'm not incumbent on, hey, that other person's there. I'm, when I'm playing solitaire, I can bumble around a little bit. I can make what I'm like, oh, that, that turn two, I, that was stupid. Why did I do that? And that is what I think you'll get from the solitaire experience here. Room to grow. Room to learn. Peloponnesian War. See you guys. Chief. Chief.